as a child to have your school get not just one, not just two, but multiple bomb threats. Forgive me, what, what, what is the point of this questioning? What does this have to do with PragerU? I don't know what else you need to lose faith in our legacy media. There was no possible way anyone watching this would know how much good exists at PragerU. Lying by omission is as evil as lying by commission. What I hear from teachers of every background is that they are slammed. They don't even have time to talk about pronouns, gender things, theory. Okay, I just want people to watch the following clips because the gaslighting has to end. Hello, Prayer You family. We are here because we wanted to talk about something pretty important that happened recently. And the reason we're doing this episode commenting on this hit piece that NBC has made about Prayer You is not because we feel like we need to be defensive, but because we feel like we need to be educational. We want you to learn what we have learned a long time ago, and that is you cannot trust legacy media institutions. Their goal is to manipulate not just us, but manipulate you into believing in their ideology. And so just recently they came in and produced a piece about PragerU, they sat down with me, they sat down with Dennis, we've had many conversations, and they decided to twist and th turn things into a pretzel in order to fit their own agenda. The thing that we knew to do in advance, and I think this is something that is worth you paying attention to, is that we recorded everything for you to see. You can watch the footage of the interview with me, which, by the way, they did not air. You can watch. So, the by the way, they promised they, they, they would give it to us after they did air it. And refused to do right. so. But luckily, we recorded it because this is what we have to do these days. This is what we have to do in order to protect truth and to defend truth. And so we recorded everything and we're going to make it available for you to watch so that you can go ahead and make your own decisions about the integrity or the lack of integrity of America's press. And so Dennis is here with me because we have some comments about this episode and we look forward to sharing them. Right, with so you. We'll, we'll show it to you and we'll comment. By the way, for me, it will be truly spontaneous. I only saw the first half. I'll, I'll offer my own very brief uh, introduction. I, I agree with everything that, that Marissa said. I always, I always analyze. That's built into my nature. So do the people who, who did this at NBC, did they go into this thinking, you know, we really have to be deceptive? They don't think they're deceptive. They think that they're doing a service to America by bad-mouthing a conservative organization or if you will, to be perfectly accurate, a non-left-wing organization. So much of, first of all, the vast majority of our stuff is not even political. I'll say one prefatory comment about the content and then we'll go to what NBC put out. 33 minutes, correct, by the way, 33 minutes. So it's over, overwhelmingly, if I'm, unless it was only truth for the first half and I didn't see the second half, is about race. Mm -hmm. I don't think 1% of PragerU output is about race. Well, that's what upsets them. They want it to be about race. That, that's correct. All right, let's start watching. Hello there, I'm Chuck Todd, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Press Reports. So how did a writer and a radio talk show host become the creator of a conservative curriculum being adopted by a growing number of states? Talk radio host Dennis Prager came to believe our public schools... By the way, so, like okay, so you'll get a kick out of this because you're probably wondering, why am I making a comment now? So soon. He didn't say anything, really. So I am, I am proud of 40 years of being a talk show host. The number of people I have been able to touch, the millions, is a gift from God or a gift from luck, if you will. I know what they intend to do. They intend to convey the idea that's all he is. They Wouldn't you think of oh, the author of 10 books is relevant? New York Times bestsellers, the, the most, uh, the mo the best-selling uh, Bible commentary in America today uh, because of his knowledge of biblical Hebrew. Uh, wouldn't that strike you as worthy of note? If they liked us, I promise you, they would have said that. Well, it's what the New York Times did when they wrote about us. They described me as a former Hebrew tutor. 
Oh, right? perfect. I'm in my 40s. I haven't tutored since I was 18 years old, but that was the bio that they no, gave This me. is important that you're hearing this, folks, that that's how the, the script. These are subtle but powerful ways of dismissing us. Two weeks ago, I spoke at Columbia University uh, newspaper, The Spectator, which, of course, doesn't like me. So their first sentence was Dennis Prager. Uh, a school of a Columbia School of International Affairs dropout. <laughs> right. that, that was my entire right. You're so simple, Dennis. You're, I mean, that's you, the thing. They just... By the way, who is a graduate school dropout? Like, I've heard of high school dropouts. I, so that's just so understand it, this is all meant to diminish us. Okay. Right. And to deceive the public. That's Basic, the main yeah, issue. Okay. Language and not enough time on what makes America great. In other words, he argues they're too woke. So he created PragerU. These are videos designed to create an alternative to the American curriculum. But a lot of people look at PragerU's videos and see a whitewashing of unattractive parts of American history. So I just want to mention that we are not creating an alternative to America's curriculum. We say this every single time, especially with PragerU kids, we create supplementary content. It's not that we're looking to take out math or that we're looking to take out literacy. We're looking to even out the playing field, provide additional resources so that teachers, families, parents, kids have options, not to replace everything that is there, but to actually supplement it with good stuff. By the way, is it unfair to say that the current curricula in the vast majority of American schools, private or public, depicts America in a dark way? It, there's a very big difference between presenting the truth, including dark chapters, and depicting something as overwhelmingly dark. I'd like to, I'd like to ask Chuck Todd, can you tell me anything positive about America taught? in any of our schools? Okay. Antonia, what did you learn? Well, Chuck, we went behind the scenes of PragerU's operations to understand the controversial edutainment company's vision for American education. Beyond the shiny studios, bright lights, and cartoons was a belief okay. that our okay, country Okay, I'm sorry. Here we go. The, 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 I feel like, this is really funny, I feel like I'm doing my Bible commentary. Okay, wait a minute. Now, why is this word used in verse 16 and not that word? So controversial. This is a very interesting thing. Has Chuck Todd ever reported on anything left and called it controversial? Or is only something not left controversial? Mm -hmm. This is, by the way, why I wanted to do this. This is because I want people who are watching this to learn yes. how to watch That's, content like it. this That's and understand how they are being manipulated. Because I think yes. that, you know, as we get into this, one of the important things that we realize that is happening in this moment in our country is that people are starting to wake up and they don't quite understand what they're waking up to. You're seeing this huge disappointment with our universities, the Ivy Leagues, whether it's Harvard or Penn, MIT, people just astonished and shocked about these legacy institutions that are failing them. Well, this is another example of another legacy institution that has frankly failed Americans because of this manipulation, gaslighting, uh, ward game that they do. And I want people who are watching this to watch this with us and learn from you how to listen for language that is manipulative because we know how to do it here. You and I can watch this episode and laugh and, and realize, you know, that these are lies. But I want you to teach your kids. I want you to teach your college students. I want you all to learn how to watch segments like this and realize just from the beginning, from the first minute, what you're stepping into. Right. And so, again, I just posed the question, have they ever done a Meet the Press documentary describing anything on the left as controversial? No, because it's me, the lying press. That's what it is. That there is a battle between good and evil, and our children and their education are the front lines. Okay, well, here we go again. <laughs> We're still in minute it, 118. It, it, isn't there something noble ab about fighting the battle of good against evil? Why is that? What isn't the implication? How odd of this Prager U place that they think that there's a battle between good and evil? Wait, the left doesn't believe that they're good and they're fighting evil? 
They, they don't. They don't believe racism is evil. They don't believe intolerance is evil. So it's a very odd thing to accuse us of. Okay. Yeah, well, the host confronted me with this question, and she said, you know, you're using this very strong la language, this military language, when talking about children, don't you think that's inappropriate? And I answered the question, which, of course, she didn't put in the segment because she didn't put any of my footage in the segment. I encourage people to go ahead and watch it because, I, you know, I think I have a very decent answer, and that is they're the ones who are attacking our kids. Should we just, you know, lay back and let yes, it happen? Yes, that's what they want us to do. Otto's Tales, let's meet a police officer. Wee -woo, wee -woo. In a studio tucked away in an unassuming corner of Los Angeles, creators and illustrators are churning out content for kids. You think about Prager. Under the direction of a former educator turned CEO, Marissa Strait. All right, so these are our editors, our illustrators. They feel like they have found a, a home here at PragerU. Some ditched careers at Nickelodeon and Disney drawn by the self-described pro-American patriotic values of nonprofit media company PragerU. How did you recruit them? How did they find out about PragerU? They have young kids. They themselves are uh, upset with what they're seeing that is produced in our culture. They feel like they're serving on the front lines of saving the war of ideas in America. Schools are supposed to empower uh, students to maximize their full potential not their sexual potential. That's right. But behind the shiny studios and kid-friendly content is a dark view of the direction of our country. For many conservatives, our current By culture way, war correct. is a battle between it, good it, it and is evil, a dark view right of the and left. Of our this idea fuels book bans and bills in dozens of states seeking to restrict how teachers can talk. Oh, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Book bans, a word needs to be said about the book bans charge of the left against the right. There has never been a time in the history of Western civilization and probably other civilizations that books for children were not banned. Any society that does not ban certain books for the, from the use of children uh, is a really bad society and you don't want your children growing up in it. I re why, did there, why was there a children's section in the public library when I was a child? It meant that the adult section had books that were banned to me as a child. It's a, it's a, it's a classic example of they lie, and I'm not even sure they know they're lying, but it doesn't really matter to me. I only judge behavior. That is a lie. That all of a sudden there's book banning. There, there has always been book banning. The question is, are the books that we are asking to ban appropriate or inappropriate? that there is book banning thank god there are books banned for children the tragedy in america is the books banned for adults by the left are the tweets banned by the by social media are the are the youtube videos banned by by social media that's that's the they're trying to deflect from the real censorship in this country which is new from what has been always present banning certain things from children's view. I mean, would she have a problem with movies that are rated PG or PG-13? Right, right. Yeah, I mean, well, are they going to go that's after right. Disney now? That's movie banning. Oh, banning. movie banning of children. That's right. Right? But well, in, well in, in a school library, it's okay, but uh, in a theater, it's not okay? Gender and tough chapters of our history. There's a difference between teaching slavery and teaching our kids that America is this institutionally racist. And because you have a certain skin color, you're likely today to be treated like garbage. Why don't we teach them that they should be victors, not victims? For what it's worth, I wasn't ever made to feel like a victim just because I knew about the horrors of slavery. Wait, 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 wait. Let me respond to that. So, so daughter, that's a non sequitur. The reason blacks and, and other non-whites are taught that they're victims is not solely due to slavery. It is because America today is systemically racist, according to the left. If, if she's denying that non-white kids are taught that they're victims, then she's telling you a lie. And it's very hard for me to accuse her of doing so, because that's the, about the worst thing I can accuse a human being of. So, uh, but... She knew she she knew she couldn't say I was never taught that I was a victim said I was never taught that I was a victim because of slavery. 
Hmm. She knew in her subconscious or conscious mind, I can't say as a non-white that I was never taught I'm a victim because the lie is so grotesque, she would laugh at herself. Mm -hmm. So she ended the sentence with something nobody is claiming. The reason that non-whites are taught you're victims is because of America today is systemically racist, according to the left. Yeah, I mean, this is the segment that they actually put in from our supposed interview, because we actually had a sit down interview, which never made it into the segment. Uh, but we were chatting here in my office and I, I, I got pretty spunky with her because I love America. I appreciate America. And when I feel like you're attacking my country, I'm going to get passionate about it. And so I was very passionate about it because I felt like parents like me are gaslit. We are saying that you're teaching our children that America is this horrible racist place today. And that is simply not true. And so of all the pieces that they decided to take from the interview with me is the part where I got very spunky and protective over the America that I love. And you're, you're about to see that part. The horrors of slavery. We do teach about the horrors of slavery, but I don't think that young black Americans should be taught that there is no hope and that the system is set up against them. Why is it a good thing to teach your child that you live in a hole? That is not a good thing. There is so much, look at you. Look at you. You're so successful. I never right? said I, I right. thought I lived in a hole. Founder Dennis Prager was raised in a Jewish community in Brooklyn, New York, and has shared his views on race and history as a controversial national radio host for years. The left has made it impossible to say the N-word any longer. That's disgusting. It's a farce. It's the only word that you can't say in the English language. Of course, you should never call anybody the N-word. That's despicable. Okay, so this this is really worthy of a few moments. So this alone invalidates NBC. A, that has nothing to do with PragerU. That's from my radio show from four years ago, three and a half years ago, whatever it is. B, they never asked me to comment on it. C, it's unrelated to anything in the video. We don't have enough to really show Prager of PragerU as racist. Let's take this, which doesn't show I'm racist, by the way. I will comment on, on the actual context. I know where they got this from, a hate organization, a Media Matters for America, uh, where the founder spent his early career smearing Hillary Clinton and then moved over to the left and now smears people on the right. He's, he's a sick man who devo has devoted his life to smearing people. That's all Media ma Matters for America is. It, it, it's what Elon Musk wants to sue and should. Uh, they distort and lie and smear uh, uh, professionally. So I, I want to give this video as an example. This is really important that all of you watching this know this. I remember this very, very well. I was talking about the uh, uh, biography of Harry Truman, but uh, I was talking about it and he noted in the, in the early chapters when Harry Truman first visited New York and he, he wrote back uh, to his, uh, uh, I think to his wife, or certainly to his family, I think to his wife, I'm not sure. Oh, here I am in Kike Town. Kike is the, is the N-word for Jews. So I noted, and the caller called me, said, I don't understand, Dennis, why can you say Kike? And I'm a Jew, by the way. And why can anyone say kike, but they can't say the N-word? And I said, that's ridiculous. That is correct. You can't even say the N-word to condemn it, which I do. I've never in my life, not once, privately or publicly, uttered the word to describe a black human being. But if I read Huckleberry Finn, or if I read the autobiography of, of Frederick Douglass, as I did, where, where he... he uses the word because that's what white racists use. You can't even read that on the air. I can say Kike Town. So I was saying, and by the way, the New York Times just published the word in, in a piece by Jack McWhorter, John McWhorter, who is a black professor, uh, describing when it became impossible to ever say the word in any context. So all I said on the air was it's, it, that's ludicrous. And it is. You can't even condemn the word and use the word. Mm -hmm. And the word is contemptible, as I as at least they had the, the, the decency to put that up. But the damage is done. It makes it sound like I want to use the word. Why did they stick that in? 
It has nothing to do with PragerU, nothing to do with the subject. But if we can smear Prager of PragerU, ah, then NBC has done its job. At the end of the day, the game is to try to smear PragerU That's and right. smear Oklahoma. So it's okay to try to do these kind of gotcha right. moments, manipulation moments for the sake yep. of their noble cause, which is to take us down. Right. His platform, founded in 2009, has operations in L.A., Florida, and Nashville. Historians and educators warn that the content is distorted and is propaganda. And since the pandemic, they've more than doubled revenue and reached over 9 billion lifetime views. We don't think they learn much in American schools. If you're spending a good part of the day teaching kids about preferred pronouns and other what we call woke issues, then you, you're really not teaching them. What I hear from teachers of every background is that they are slammed from block to block. They are underpaid, they are underappreciated, and that they don't even have time to talk about pronouns, gender theory, critical race theory. What I don't do believe that there? they're telling you the truth. I actually think they're lying to you. You I'm think sorry. all of the teachers not are all. lying No, to you. not at all. Okay. I just want people to watch the following clips because the gaslighting has to end. I can't tell you how many times leftists have said to me that conservatives are making it up, that critical race theory in schools does not exist, that or even preferred pronouns. preferred pronouns doesn't exist, that LGBTQ stuff doesn't exist, that teachers are just so focused on teaching, they're doing none of this. So here's a bunch of clips. Watch for yourself. The Pittsburgh Public Schools is now offering what it calls an anti-racist approach, saying it is trying to address racial inequity in math classes. We think of math as, you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, sort of an objective reality. How can math be racist? We're talking about really a mindset, and it's an approach. So whether we use the term anti-racist or we talk about um, racial equity, it's, it's, it's the same. Okay, anti-racist and racial equity, first of all, are not the same. Because the, no mainstream media allow for people like us to actually respond to any of this, people think they heard something that's coherent. Racial equity is result. So if black students are scoring under white students, then that's the same as, and, and we note that, and we fight that, that means that we're anti-racist. But because it's racist if the results are not equitable. But then it's anti-white vis-a-vis Asians. Asians score better than whites. So what, what, does, any, what does any of that mean? <laughs> it means that anything that you can objectively measure is racist. Because... Well, it does. Oregon Education Department has announced the idea, people should look this up, the idea that there is one objectively correct answer in math is white supremacist. The superintendent talking about it. So when she says, oh, nobody is saying these things, oh, no, uh, here it's, it is. It's, it, it, right. Okay, I have five additional examples for you. Queer, not, har not hard to find. I mean, it took us... Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. five minutes. Queer non-binary teacher shows off his classroom. Uh, let's do a tour of my inclusive classroom. Starting off with the social justice word wall we will be growing throughout the year. We did our identity maps and what is identity. A large collection of books. Oh, a pronoun poster. A shocking pride flag. Yes, because love is a human right and everyone in this classroom matters. More inclusive picture books. Pronoun mascot. Oh my goodness, inclusive poster. Books. I'll be showing you more of that's my inclusive classroom. Next, let's see the next. These don't exist. First of all, like as a high school history teacher, critical race theory is not something that I explicitly teach. Like I don't teach that term. I don't ever use that phrase, but it's something that's basically woven throughout my entire US history class. It really is just the idea of a few things. One, that race is a social construct that still impacts our systems today. Two, that systemic racism is still around and is still a thing, and that there is still white privilege. There are obstacles that white people don't have to face that people who are not white still have to face. Okay, this is former DEI leader and Dean of Instruction. 
Okay, so supposedly these teachers don't exist, right, Dennis? Right. Decolonizing education means we need to radically reimagine what schooling can look like. It means prioritizing equity. It means not accepting the status quo. To decolonize education means to get to the root of how and why we operate the way we do in school. And in what ways does it uphold whiteness? Decolonization in education goes beyond inviting everyone to the table. It pushes past asking for ideas to contribute at the table and gets to the reason why we need a table in the first place to bring everyone together. <laughs> well, it, it's do you know that I think Stanford University now has as many administrators as students? Uh, what, what are they doing? They're, they're administrating. I mean, it's the college level as much as the high school or elementary school level. It's, it's DEI instruction and, and, and the like. Almost anybody watching this knows that the argument that we're making it up, that this, this is what saturates education, uh, is, is false. Okay. If, look at the teachers' unions' positions. The teachers' unions are among the most radical groups in the United States of America. PragerU's goal is to reach at least 20 hours of, quote, alternative edutainment on a weekly basis and to add states like Texas to a list of official partners that includes Florida, New Hampshire, and Oklahoma. So are you just in a race for who can indoctrinate the kids first, who can win their hearts and minds? To a certain extent, I guess you, you, might, you might have to put it that way. But I, I want their doctrines taught. They don't want ours taught. It's really my pleasure and great honor to introduce to you a fellow warrior for truth. Oklahoma State Superintendent of Education Ryan Walters is a proud PragerU Kids partner. We literally have an education system that has been indoctrinating kids with radical left wokeism for decades. But Tulsa, with its painful history of a racist massacre in 1921, is a diverse city in a conservative state. This clarity. Walters recently threatened their majority minority Tulsa public schools with a state takeover if academic performance didn't improve. We've sent a clear message to Tulsa public schools. What is the problem with that? Why is it a problem? Those are the words that I, I had in my I mean, mind. I'm just, you, okay, I have three right. kids under the age of 11. I used to teach. I used to run a school. I have no problem with somebody saying to schools, if you don't do a good job, we will hold you accountable. And this is, by the way, why people want Prager U. Because shouldn't we hold these people accountable? What is this superintendent doing that is so wrong. I am happy to go on record as saying, if your child, let's say your college college child, let alone high school, forgetting STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, which we don't uh, teach and cannot teach, but with regard to history and understanding life and, and having a healthier approach uh, to uh, the human race, if you will, uh, your child will gain so much more from watching all our videos, reading the recommended readings that we have with them, than going to virtually any college in the United States of America. As uh, one student told me, uh, uh, many, and this is years ago, when we were at a third the number of PragerU videos, said, I, I just graduated Princeton. I learned much more at PragerU than at Princeton. Failure is not going to be an option. We need drastic changes. We need tough decisions made. Ebony Johnson is the superintendent of Tulsa Schools. I can see why our families would feel like, whoa, you know, why just Tulsa? Your state superintendent, Ryan Walters, has announced a partnership with PragerU. Are Tulsa schools using PragerU videos? We are not. We are so laser-like focused on the state-approved and adopted curriculum. Do you think it's a possibility that at some point he will require that districts like yours use PragerU? Okay, for, well, what is the question about? No one requires, nor do we ask people to require. Do you know how many times I said to her that we don't believe in being heavy-handed when it comes to education? The number of times that I responded to the question of whether we believe that PragerU content should be mandatory in states is in the thousands, okay? And it's never an issue. All they say is teachers can use it. It's and that's not okay with the left. 
You shouldn't be able to use it. You shouldn't have the option yes. to choose right. to use it. Yeah. As far as, um, again, um, Superintendent Walter saying this shall be or this is what we're going to do, that'll be a bridge that we'll cross um, and have to process and understand once we get there. Some Tulsa teachers are already using it, like elementary teacher Gabe Woolley, who played PragerU videos last year in the district. I don't want my students to think and believe that slavery only happened in America and it only happened with these two groups of people because that does not explain to them what slavery is. Here's the first thing you need to know. Slavery was not invented by white people. I will say from the perspective of a black American who's a descendant of slaves, it feels like in this video that's called a short history of slavery, like she's immediately on the defensive. And we're almost half. Okay, let, let, let me. This part I actually did see. So, so, so. First of all, you see just for a moment that it's a black person giving it. In this case, Candace Owens, and it's a PragerU video. It's been widely viewed. But what you should all watch is on YouTube, black podcasters, young podcasters, commenting on this video. Have you seen that? Yeah. This is crazy. It's just too far gone, bro. So they're telling me that the white man saved my people, basically. It's just hard to hear, you know? Yeah. White man! It's hard to hear, like, what do I say to that? She says, why are you defensive? I'll tell you why we're defensive, or better, why we're defending, because of the left-wing attack on white America as particularly vile in human history. But in fact, slavery was universal, literally universal. I don't know if we know of a society in history, black, uh, Asian, Middle Eastern, white, that did not have slaves. There were millions of white slaves. There, there, or the, the largest, uh, I, I believe in the Middle Ages, the largest enslavement was done by Arabs of blacks. It's like saying, we're attacking you for white privilege, for a, a, a despicable race-based, race-preoccupied, racist history. And then you say, well, wait, we, we would like to set the record straight. It was evil. That No one denies that. It, it, slavery was one of the greatest evils. It's one of my arguments for why human nature is not basically good, that slavery was so widespread. Frederick Douglass points out in one of his speeches, it was whites who abolished slavery for blacks. It wasn't blacks who abolished slavery in, in Africa. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, Asians. It wasn't Arabs. It was white England. And he, he grew up and, and, and was treated miserably by his slave-owning whites. That's why he ran away and risked his life to run away. But he was, he was a moral man who believed in truth. So the question that a serious person, which disqualifies too many on the left, who have a, a, an agenda that does not incorporate truth, the question, if you care about mor morality and truth, is not who had slavery who abolished slavery. Everybody had slavery. But isn't it important to find out who ended it? And as uh, Frederick Douglass says, Britain and then America. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk about question. She set up this interview with the teacher where first they laid out this picture that Teachers are not even using PragerU, right? That was the last piece. Now they're sitting there with the teacher who is using PragerU. And it doesn't even seem like she's really asking him a question. She's kind of accusing him by saying, well, I am a black woman and I'm uncomfortable when I'm watching this. I just imagine what this teacher is is supposed to do. There, here, here he is sitting there with this camera crew and she's basically accusing him of, of making her uncomfortable. I was like, well, uh, this is not an interview. This is, I don't know what you would call this, but I, I actually legitimately feel bad for this teacher. Well, he held his own. She's giving credit mostly to white people right now for ending it right. before before the acknowledgement of the pain that some of your students might actually know about and feel in their families, right? Right. And there's a lot of content that we cover that doesn't Okay, let me, right. let me say something so as a Jew media, here. So, so if, somebody, if somebody did a video about... Uh, uh, Germans who hid Jews during the Holocaust, Poles who hid Jews during the Holocaust. I would assume that everybody watching it knew the pain of the Holocaust. Otherwise, why are they watching it? I want to know 
why they were good people. I, as a Jew, want to know, wow, it's nice to know that there were, there were good non-Jews, good Christians at that time. Not enough by any means, but they, they did exist. Shouldn't we learn about the good? Do we only talk about evil? Does, it, does a video on, on, on slavery have to include in five minutes all, all the torture and beatings that accompanied slavery? That wasn't the subject. My assumption is everybody knows that. What people don't know is who got rid of it, which strikes me as important to the human condition. Right. It's what our slogan is. We teach what isn't taught. We teach what should be taught. And should be taught. On social media, I come across extraordinary depictions about how Africans lived like pharaohs before Europeans came and laid waste to their paradise. I wish any of this were true, but it's not. It's a fantasy. Okay, I have to pause the video there because I also know that that wasn't completely accurate. There were massive libraries and inventions and unbelievable cultures, but that's but she made it look as though there wasn't a culture, there wasn't a society there that if you're a black student watching that, you might leave feeling like your culture was disrespected. Okay, I like to, this is a very sensitive issue. This is this is worthy of a PragerU video. It's a very sensitive subject, but I, I'm, I believe it needs to be addressed. The, the fact that one's racial ancestors may or may not have had an advanced civilization should not mean anything. Before Christianity took over Europe, every civilization was barbaric. So the, the racial background of, of the English, of the French, of the Germans, uh, you, you, name, you name the group, was barbarity sheer barbarity so th this notion that i have to believe that my blood ancestors or race ancestors or color ancestors had some terrific uh, 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 civilization i don't understand that it, the, the question is is it true or not but but it's primitive to think i have to be proud of my racial group of of a thousand years ago i, I don't believe in that this this notion of racial pride is is not impressive to me for any group well especially when we're teaching young kids that it should come in lieu of being proud of what you actually do today and being held accountable That's for right. your actions yes. today, yes. right? It's like, yes. oh, well, I'm allowed to behave like this or like that because my ancestors went through horrible times, right? That is a big part of it. Yeah, and I think it's important for teachers to definitely be like holding a conversation. I want to make sure that what I'm showing is maybe filling in some gaps of mm -hmm. things that we just don't hear commonly through history. Wooley says he sees PragerU as a supplement, not substitute. He now teaches at a local charter school. He believes it's parents, not teachers, who should talk to kids about LGBTQ identities or movements like Black Lives Matter. Some kids in the Tulsa area, they don't have great family lives. What if public school is the only place they can find a trusted adult to talk to about these issues? What if they need to learn about them from someone like you? I think that there is an appropriate age and time for everything. Families like the Reyes in another Tulsa area district say claims that Oklahoma teachers... By the way, she asked me the same question, and I did give her an answer. And I can tell you, as an educator, a former educator... I don't think teachers are equipped to talk about very complex psychological issues. They're not equipped. The place to do it is not in front of a bunch of other students. And this idea that children don't have adults that they can speak with about um, complex sexual issues does not mean that it's the job of the teacher. Yes, and exactly. Teachers can't why, do it. why are the teachers good at it? Your point... See, this is a perfect example of the secularization of our age. A hundred years ago, if a kid didn't have a parent to talk about sexual issues to, they went to the rabbi, priest, or minister. Yeah, go to church. Right. But or, they don't have a rabbi, priest, or minister in their lives anymore. Or even so they a don't therapist. Have a, they don't have a parent that they could trust. They don't have a clergy they could trust. So the teacher is now the parent and the clergy. And Not has to do idea. it and has to do it in front of 20 or 40 right. other children. Right. We're bringing up controversial topics in class are false. 
what does trouble them? A string of anonymous bomb threats at their school. Okay. What do bomb threats have to do with PragerU? Nothing. Who doesn't? There. I'm sorry to say, and this is a tragedy in America, both sides get bomb threats. Okay? Just for the record. But we're 10 minutes into an interview about PragerU, and there's another 10 minutes to go. And for some reason, NBC decides to talk about bomb threats while while covering PragerU. Well, it's U. like talking about my N-word uh, from my radio show without the context. It, they just stick stuff in, again, to show how bad we are. By the way, Vice did the same thing a few years ago when they did a hit piece on PragerU. And they just before the hit piece started, they had a segment that connected into PragerU that had to do with ISIS. It was a PragerU and ISIS segment. And so here we are, PragerU and bomb threats segment. Right. What? Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. This fall, a teacher posted a TikTok lampooning the accusation that teachers are trying to turn their kids woke. A right-wing TikTok account and the state superintendent, Ryan Walters, shared it without context. When it becomes all about you and whatever agenda that you have in that moment, it's not about the kids anymore. Then the district received 10 days of bomb threats within one month. Lindsay is a mom of six. Her daughter, Zoe, is in the fifth grade. Lindsay is not just a mom of six. Do you know who Lindsay is? No. Nope. Lindsay is the past president of the Union Schools Education Federation. And Liz, Lindsay's husband is also on the school, on the Union School Board. Had yeah. they been right-wing parents, you think they would have been identified as such? Right. Okay. It kind of scared me. But then I realized, well, it's just people sitting in front of a computer trying to scare you. That's not a very normal thing as a child yeah. to have your school get not just one, not just two, but multiple bomb threats. When you kept hearing it happen again and again, what went through your mind? For, uh, give me, forgive me, what, what, what is the point of this questioning? What does this have to do with PragerU? She's talking to a 10-year-old child about bomb threats, and then she's going to talk to her about PragerU. How do you think she's going to react to PragerU after you scare this child about bomb threats? Well, well, this is the state of NBC, for the record, CBS and ABC, too. Legacy media. This is the media. I think... What went through my mind whenever I heard it going again and again, it's repetitive. Like, if it hasn't happened two or three times, then it's not going to happen the fourth or the fifth. What's it like for you as a mom to listen to that? I mean, it's heartbreaking, and no child should ever have to go through one, let alone multiple, and then just feel like it's a normal thing. Her dad, Joey, had to respond to those threats as a member of the school board. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think... I'm trying to, like, figure out, like, the play. Um, you can take a deep breath, too. No need to rush through. <laughs> well, no, answer. it's just... So the dad is crying uh, because of the bomb threats, mm -hmm. I guess. Again, this is supposed to be about PragerU, and I'm just trill... I, I, did we make this guy cry? Th there's more time being spent on this than with you. Correct. They spend more <laughs> time with the fifth grader than with the CEO of the company. <laughs> Great job. We trust our people, right? We trust our educators. Like we said, I mean, these are, this is our community. Mm -hmm. So either we trust them or we don't. The Reyes family is a mix of white, Mexican, and indigenous American. They agreed to give us their honest take. White people were the first to formally put an end to slavery. Now, am I saying that this makes white people better than anyone else? Of course not. What did you think of the perspectives there? We read, read this in a book. Okay, so what she's watching right now is not PragerU Kids. That's Candace Owens' voice. So that's in the five-minute videos. Right. Now, I don't actually think it's a problem that a fifth grader would watch uh, uh, any right. one of We're our five-minute videos. We're happy for them to watch any of our adult videos. But just correct. to be clear, our yes, partnerships with the state is correct. with PragerU Kids, and right. that is not part of that curriculum. But something that I noticed was... No other culture did anything. No other culture died. No other culture s tried to stop slavery, which I know that isn't true. 
We also watched Prager. Well, it, well, it is true. Outside of the Western world, what culture tried to stop slavery? She learned that actually no other cultures. Right. Other than Judeo, other than the West, right. actually took yes. the steps to stop slavery. The child right. learned it, and so they're upset about it. Right. So because they, because they don't ask, is it true? They ask, it, does it comport with left wing right. dogma? So right. that's why they're upset. Right. Watched Prager characters Leo and Layla, who go back in time to visit historical figures like Christopher Columbus. I'm sorry, Mr. Columbus, but I heard at school that you spoil paradise. And you brought slavery and murder to peaceful people. Leo, <laughs> sorry. It's what I read and heard at school. Caramba! Those are some accusations. The place I discovered was beautiful, but it wasn't exactly a paradise of civilization. And the native people were far from peaceful. But you just... So, I definitely think this is pointing towards how Christopher Columbus is a good guy. Second of all, I think I'd really enjoy just watching these at school, but that just kind of stuck in my brain because I liked it more than reading from a book with scratched up pictures. Makes sense. It's an animation. I have no <laughs> It's just, it's just like this is a great test case. <laughs> yep. And by the way, she's learning the truth. It wasn't peaceful, and they were. He he discovered a, a a tribe that was deeply afraid of a cannibalistic tribe. That happens to be true. That's not whitewashing Columbus. It's telling the truth about what he found. Right, and of course they cut the segment where the kids say back to Christopher for Columbus that in our time, we realize that slavery is mm -hmm. is horrible. Right. They cut that out. But that's part of it. Too. And he celebrates it. Yes. He says, He's like, great, oh, that's great. great. To hear. That's yeah. a good thing. Right. Yeah. Clearly, it, it it's just really trying to make him out to be this great person who didn't do anything, you know, in a negative sense. And that's extremely concerning to me. Back at their Los Angeles head. It is not true that we depicted Christopher Columbus, who's as somebody who didn't do anything negative. He admitted that he had slaves. The kid said that slavery is bad. Mm -hmm. It's not true. I asked Dennis Prager if he takes those concerns into account. Take the Christopher Columbus video. The perspective of indigenous people isn't really evident in that video. The video, A Short History of Slavery, the host defends white people's actions, the way in which they fought for abolition, the way in which they died fighting in the Civil War. But at no point do they actually talk about what American slavery was really like. Why leave all that out? If, if this is about the okay, truth and about so additional context, why leave that out? If you feel that way, I promise you, on camera, we will make a video on how terrible slavery was. Columbus was asked something to the effect of what, uh, what he thought about slavery, and he defended slavery because Columbus did defend slavery. He sees that emphasis, that framing, as the point. Here, take a look at some of the things our videos do say about slavery. Was being a slave hard? It was terrible. I rarely got enough to eat and I worked all the time. Hard work is great when you can benefit from it, but I couldn't because I was a slave. I want slavery to end. At this time that you have come to visit, for half of the United States, it is okay for some people to own other people, make them work for many hours for no pay, and force them to do anything, anytime. That's so unfair and horrible. First and foremost, the commandment against stealing has always been understood to mean that we are not allowed to steal another human being, what we call kidnapping. That is why no one who had even an elementary understanding of the Eighth Commandment could ever use the Bible to justify the most common form of slavery, the kidnapping of human beings and selling them into slavery. Douglas defended equality and freedom until the day he died. He had well understood the deep prejudice that existed, but he never accepted it as an inherent part of American culture. It's a tough thing to be a good person. That's not taught. And so we don't teach goodness. So perhaps what PragerU has thought, maybe it's really important to teach who did good. Since bad was so ubiquitous, maybe you should learn who did good. I think teachers would agree with you on that point, that positive histories and heroes are really important for kids to learn about, but not at the expense of 
the reality of what happened. I agree with you, and I don't. I, if we do it, then we're guilty. If we don't do it, we're not guilty. What would a good American education system look like to you? Uh, like it did in in the 1930s, minus uh, any uh, anything that was uh, offensive. All the bad like, things going yeah, on yeah, in the 1930s. Right. Minus, minus the bad things. Yes, that's correct. By the way, I like, let me explain that. Because mm, uh, they cut you off right yes, after Yes, exactly. I think all of you should go to The Atlantic, an article by David Brooks, who was a New York Times columnist, who is uh, now a Democrat. He was once a Republican, but he so hated Donald Trump that he moved over. Just want you to understand it's not coming from some uh, Republican slash conservative. And he wrote about how 100 years ago and throughout American history, American education was saturated with character development in its curriculum. How to be honest, how to be decent, how to be polite, how to treat your elders, how to respect your teachers. That's what I was referring to, just for the record. I mean, she's obviously thinking that you're th you're referring to in the 1930s, racism was horrible. The way women yes, were treated the, the, was right, horrible. Yeah, the yeah, way yeah, Jews well, were well, treated. Women, we're, women Jews. weren't treated hor like blacks. I, I mean, I know you're not saying that, but that's what she thinks. I mean, you know, I think like a, a more honest assessment is, is called for. But in, in any event, there was clear sexism. There was clear racism. I said, of course, I'm not talking about that. But the essence of American education was character development. And and again, David Brooks in The Atlantic documents it. It, it is so powerful, you could cry. There is no character development education today. And that that's and there hasn't been for half a century. Well, there's bad character development. There is that. I mean, you know, SCL, social emotional learning, is their version of character development, but it's a Trojan horse of left wing propaganda and Marxism. Well, and it's a Trojan horse of you don't have to develop your character, you have to just feel right about things. Uh, what I would also encourage people to do is look at the McGuffey readers. Yes, McGuffey's, that's an example. You know, really taught kids how to read. They really taught kids how to do math. Now, there are some better ways than McGuffey's, but at the, at the core idea of what was taught in class, it was not this political leftist Marxist victim mentality that we're seeing in classrooms right now. And, you know, to clarify, when 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 people like her ask me, what is the vision of PragerU Kids? It's to bring goodness into the classrooms without the the Marxism that you find through SEL in our classrooms. And so I think what I think what you mean when 1930s education, it's not the bad stuff like, you know, all this racism or sexism or or all of these. No, of course other bad not. Things. It's not an issue. It's talking about character development, character it, development period. and basic academics. Yes. And basic academics. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Uh, read the Civil War letters of guys mm -hmm. who never went to high school. They wrote better than most college students do today. Yeah. Thanks to a much better education then. Yeah. Buy a McGuffey reader. You will be astonished to see what a fifth grader could do in, right. in, in the 1930s. Right. When I sign my books to kids at speeches, I ask them, can you read cursive? Yeah. Half of them say no. I'm trying to absorb 1930s schools, 1930s curriculum, 1930s. I mean, it, what does that look like? By the way, that's so interesting. How, how, how could a man who is moderating this thing not find out what does it look like? <laughs> Couldn't he have just put in Google what did they learn in school in the 1930s? This is not a, a, a major task. He that he's acknowledging, I don't know what Prager is talking about. No, Dennis, what they have learned is that anything that happened in America's past is horrible That's and horrific. Right. That's a this giveaway. is the perfect example, perfect example of what we are saying. People like him 
only harp on America's historical blemishes. Right. And so if you say 1930s, his mind just goes to all the horrible things. Right. He can't even come up with beautiful right. things. And that is why that's his reaction. And it's exactly our point. We need to stop teaching that America is this horrible place and everything that happened before today was just disgusting and abysmal. Right. I still have some questions about that myself, mm -hmm. Chuck. What I really understood about Dennis Prager and his larger project mm -hmm. is that, in his words, this is all about emphasizing good and goodness in the world, and that there's this battle between good forces and evil forces, uh, and that students need to learn more about the positive aspects of American and Western history here. I think the challenge, though, right, is in a country as diverse and multicultural mm -hmm. as ours, when people talk about the history, the founding of this country, to do that, to put that emphasis, it is naturally going to come at the expense of other parts of the, the reality of history there. And that's okay, what- Okay, so here is my answer to I that. I'm interested, I am, and I think Prager U is, the truth. Th this is not cheerleading for America without acknowledging bad. It is cheerleading for the truth. The United States of America became the freest country in the history of Earth, gave more people of more ethnicities and races and religions freedom and opportunity than any country in the history of the world. Either that's true or it's a lie. So if the left doesn't want that taught, either they're lying or telling the truth. The issue is not good parts versus bad parts. It's truth versus non-truth. It's really... it. it, it but truth, as I say every day on my radio show, is not a left-wing value. Truth is a conservative value. Truth is a liberal value. Truth is not a left-wing value. Teachers who I spend time with, educators, even conservative ones who would say they vote for Republicans sure. or agree with Prager on other issues, feeling concerned and unsure about their place in this field right. and their ability to continue to teach in these conditions. What kind of credentials does Prager you have? I mean, it, Dennis Prager himself, was he ever a teacher? Did he ever work in a school system? I mean, I'm just- Why didn't you look it up? Actually, I taught high school and I taught college. I was on the faculty of Brooklyn College for a number of years. So that answers that part. Credentials, I personally was a fellow at the School of International Affairs of Columbia University, and I speak French and Russian and Hebrew and English. You want more credentials? I mean, the, why didn't they look it up? What are, gee, like this is a, an, a non, unknowable question. Or your credentials. I, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, it's mind-blowing to, ha to have this. So people go, yeah. They have no credentials. How about the fact that PragerU videos are given by professors at Stanford, Princeton, Harvard, MIT, Columbia, y Yale? <laughs> I, why don't they mention that? I just happen to have a master's in education. I'm not really proud of left-wing uh, education seminaries, but I happen to have But that one. is a credential, if that's what they're asking. kindergarten all the way through yes. eighth grade okay. in California. She go. actually does respond to that part. He just doesn't seem to care. You know, sometimes some of these outside education firms usually are staffed and founded by people who were steeped in the education system. I talked to him a bit about that. Mm -hmm. They are not accredited, and he's actually very proud of that fact. What he told mm -hmm. me is that woke universities and woke schools mm -hmm. are accredited, and so Prager is proud mm -hmm. that his program is not. They see themselves as sort of a supplement, a tool, mm -hmm. a turnkey piece of content that teachers can grab and immediately start using in the classroom. And while he may not be a teacher, many of the people he has hired mm -hmm. are people who identify as conservative teachers who worked in public or private schools and have come to Prager because they like those values and that message. Kudos to her. That was an accurate response. Uh, quite yep. something. Her deep dives on education have been quite enlightening. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to hear from a Prager U supporter, Oklahoma Education Superintendent Ryan Walters, one of the people you saw in Antonio's report, and Francesca Tripodi. <laughs> the okay. minute you say the word, sure. Everybody gets defensive, Everybody right? You get defensive. defensive. I, you know, you use yes. the word propaganda. You're like, sure. you know, one person's propagandist is another person's truth teller. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for us to, though, think about this phrase indoctrination as mm -hmm. well. Right. So indoctrination is about 
um, uncritical thinking. And I would say that's the opposite of what's happening in schools. Right. Schools are not about teaching kids what to think. They're about teaching kids how to think. Oh, my God. And what she is happy with what's happening in our schools. Right. Is that we're effectively saying, hey, kids, go to YouTube. Let's go to TikTok. Yeah. Let's go to YouTube. But not Prager and U. The thing about Prager University is that it does not exist in a vacuum. Nothing on the internet does. Mm -hmm. These kinds of videos are algorithmically connected to the other guests that they have on their videos. Right. Many of these guests have their own shows, their own agenda. Okay, supposed expert in Prager U has not bothered to realize that the schools that are working with us actually go on our own platforms. We don't tell the schools to go on YouTube to find PragerU. We say that we say to them, go on the PragerU app, go on the PragerU website, go on our OTT, the you know that TV app. She's supposed to be an expert on PragerU. Not only has she never contacted us, never asked us a question, has effectively trolled us to possibly get a reputation well, her, her, for herself. That comment that, that you just noted, she she thinks that they're they're teaching kids how to think, not what to think. I mean, that's just <laughs> it's a lie. I, I hate that to use that word. I, it's it's like a more? twilight zone. And so when we advocate for something that's effectively a YouTube channel, we have to be really mindful about where that journey might lead our children. Whose responsibility is, though, to deal with this social media issue? Whose responsibility Parents, is it to deal the with social, the social media, media companies? Issues? I mean, you see what I mean here? I mean, these algorithms. I just have to say this. OK, her concern with PragerU is that we make our vi videos available on YouTube. And so Brain Pop, which is effectively a competitor to PragerU, they make kids videos. They also make our, their videos available on YouTube, but they also have a website like we do and an app. And so is she launching an investigation against Brain Pop 2? Or is it just Prager U that it's a problem because we make our videos also available on social media? I mean, you just can't make this up. This is supposed to be a Stanford professor. Stanford. Well, that doesn't mean anything anymore. <laughs> An expert on Prager U. You're right. Oh, absolutely. So, like, how yes. is it that it, it is? Are you saying that? Uh, school systems shouldn't use this stuff because of, of, of how it can be manipulated? I think it's very concerning when you, whenever you have educators supplementing curriculum, because mm -hmm. curriculum has been tested. Mm -hmm. It's pedagogical. Um, our teachers go to school to learn how to become educators. Right. I wouldn't advocate to replace schools with TED Talks either. Tested? Yeah, it's been tested and it showed us that it failed. They've changed the curriculum in the average American school today has nothing in common with the curriculum of past generations. And you know what? If they have been tested, they've been found to fail. Mm -hmm. The grades, the, uh, the ability of kids to write, to read, to do math is lower than at any time that I'm aware of in American history. The curricula of our schools stink as a general rule. Right. Schools are meant to inform and, and, and educate. Now, when it comes to regulating content on social media and right. search engines, I think we have a couple different things that we need to think about. One, we have to think about that these search engines and these social media companies are, in fact, companies. They're not designed for the public good. They're right. designed for the bottom line. Yeah, ABC Mouse still call, charges me money. <laughs> absolutely. Okay? I mean, absolutely. I'm sure you got, you know, yeah, once you subscribe, yeah. you can't seem to get sure, out of it. Sure. My kids are in college. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So this is a monetization model. Yes. And that's not public education. And so I think it's very important. We differ. Okay, What's a monetization model? Uh, YouTube. It's completely irrelevant. If, if, if Francesca wants to become an expert on PragerU and if NBC wants to bring this Stanford professor on to speak about PragerU, can she at least bother getting to know how our model works? Can she actually go to our website instead of watching our videos on YouTube? Will anyone watching more than the, uh, the more than half hour NBC devoted to PragerU have a clue as to what we do? No, they will have known about two videos on race. That's all they know. I opened this up by saying that's 1% of our output. Do they know that, for example, we have videos from professors and scholars all over America on every single president? Do you think that our Rutherford B. Hayes or Franklin Pierce video is political? What about Dr. Stephen Marmer, UCLA psychiatrist, doing a number of videos 
on how to how to be a healthier and happier human being, how to reconcile with people who have hurt you in your life, when to forgive and not to forgive. There was no possible way anyone watching this would know how much good and healthy stuff on happiness, on forgiveness exists at PragerU. Only if you watch this do you have a clue about that. Right. It, 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 it's it the the, the it, lying by omission is as evil as lying by commission. And that that is their sin here. They you know nothing about Prager U after a half hour. Yeah. We have a partnership with New Hampshire where kids can get high school credit for our financial literacy Which shows. Which way outnumbers anything on race. Correct. There's not a word about that. What are people watching this thinking about PragerU that we're somewhat associated with bombs and that we send people to YouTube, the company that we literally sued. <laughs> That's what they're coming out with because NBC cares about the truth. Yep. You got an education in uh, what is happening in our institutions right now. I, if this wasn't it, then I don't know what else you need to lose faith in our legacy media. Oh, it's a tragedy because people don't know what to trust anymore. What does Harvard mean anymore? What does NBC mean anymore? What does the New York Times mean anymore? It, it, these, this, this is a tragedy. I don't celebrate it. I, I lament it. It's tragic, but they brought it on themselves. They and, did. And that's what Well, everything the left touches, it destroys. Sad stuff. But we fight. We do. Happily. Well, thanks. Thank you, Dennis.